are talking about CSF, you know, when uh, I started off in 2007, the understanding of CSF was that CSF was meant to be uh, a carrier for the brain. The brain is something which gets deformed if you take it out of the water, much like a whale or a jelly. So CSF was supposed, supposedly keeping the shape of the brain. But in 2007, when we started cystinostomy, very accidentally, I started thinking, if that's the case, why does CSF change four to five times every day? You know, CSF is secreted at a rate of 0.3 ml per second, and this makes it almost 500 ml per day, which means it's changed almost four to five times a day. What is that? Why does that happen? So other than cystinostomy, we started thinking at what does the CSF do? Again, I always based my assumptions on the fact that we are designed in an intelligent fashion. Whatever be the religion that we believe in, or if we don't believe in any religion at all, it's a fact that we are designed in a very, very intelligent way. And I believe man is probably the zenith of evolution and creation. So if CSF was changing three times or four times a day, there was something more to CSF than just be a carrier for the brain. Well, we also know that the brain is a supercomputer and the energy for the brain is not electrical, it's, it's metabolism. So when we have a brain which is working at such a high rate, it, it needs cleaning and cooling. So I put everything together and I thought the brain is a water cooled system and the cleaning is also done by CSF. And then that started our cleaning and cooling paper. And we again put forward a very weird hypothesis that cooling is done by the sinuses. For example, the sphenoid, the ethmoid, all those sinuses are very close to the largest collection of CSF we have. And if you see, these sinuses are lined by wet clothes, mucosa. And when you breathe, these wet clothes, they evaporate water, give up the latent heat of evaporation, become cooler, and therefore cools the CSF which is adjacent to it. That CSF goes into the brain, cools the brain. A lot of implications. We found that in Alzheimer's, this cleaning and cooling doesn't take place. Degenerative diseases, this doesn't take place. These channels through which the CSF goes in, they call the virtual Robin spaces. They are the paravascular spaces, they surround the vessels and the CSF is pumped into every millimeter of the brain by the vascular pulsation. So much so that the brain looks pulsatile. It's because the CSF and the vessels pulsate. Well, <clears throat> this is our work on the CSF and, well, so 
the, I would rather stop uh, my, I mean, our talk on CSF. The CSF past was when we thought the CSF was used for as just a carrier for brain. The present is cystinostomy, where we think that CSF goes to the brain and the CSF shift edema could be alleviated by opening into the cisterns and so on. The future is this CSF is also used for cleaning and cooling and you could have a thousand research papers where this cleaning and cooling if it's incorrect you can have many diseases and we could we could do a lot of research on this is the future but you must understand that all this i based on one conclusion and that was we are, are intelligently designed so i started thinking further in 2010 and 2011 i started thinking about who designed this who is the designer and then i'm going to tell you about few of my findings so we most of us i believe we live in the spinal and the sensual level of living we live at the level of five senses All the cultures always felt a presence. People called it God. People worshipped. People called it different names. John, there is a there is some sort of a disturbance. John, can you? Would you like us to just ask questions now, Doc? No, 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 no. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, yes, so yes. I, it's an undisputed fact that God exists in every culture all over the world, everywhere, from the beginning till now. It's called in different names, religions are made, vested interests, and uh, our egos cause us to fight. We name people across religions, across the social fabric. But nonetheless, we all feel the presence of this designer. And we know this intelligent design is by one supreme being, maybe beings, or as this part of the world believes we ourselves did this. Now let's look at something different. What's a Fibonacci sequence? I'm sure Slavin and Hira and all must be interested in this. You see the Fibonacci sequence is one, two, three. You add two and three, you get five. You get three and five, you, you get eight. 5 and 8, 13, and so on. So you divide any number by the previous number. You get this ratio, 1.618. It's called the golden ratio. Ancient artists knew this. Leonardo da Vinci knew this. When they drew faces, they used, they used this ratio. When they built buildings, they used this ratio. Ancient Vastu people in India who were the greatest architects, they used this ratio. The Egyptian pyramids used this ratio. But you must be amazed if we know that the nature used this ratio. An egg, the sunflower holds 
a nautilus, a snail. The branching of trees, the branching of blood vessels, a solar system, mantras, yantras, mandalas, pyramids, everything. You see this golden ratio. So, I'm going to show you this video. Mandelbrot's fascination with the visual side of math began when he was a student. His old age, I'm going to talk to you about something called Mandelbrot set. Mandelbrot found out that an equation which defines infinity. And this part of the world, there was a relation. I'm going to show you the shape of infinity that Mandelbrot made out with computers. That's the shape of right, infinity. The Mandelbrot set. If I need to start Mandelbrot set usually, it looks like a man, it looks like a cat, it looks like a cactus, it looks like a cockroach, it's got millions and millions of cells. Okay. You can see the shape. Now, so the Mandelbrot set looks like this. Now, you can see the shape. And there's this trunk. You know, in ancient Indian culture, there's this peculiar god who is worshipped before the beginning of anything. And this God was called Ganesh. It is said that he is the son of Shiva and Shiva had cut off his head and pasted an elephant's head instead. But you see this shape and you see this shape. And you will be amazed to know that Ganesh actually literally translates to the Lord of Mathematics. Gana, Ganatantra is mathematics. Gana means numbers. Ganesh Ish means God. So Ganesha is Isha of Gana, the Lord of Mathematics. And Mandelbrot saw it in 1966. Mathematicians in this part of the world saw it 3,000, maybe 5,000 years back. Let's look at some more things. Again, We talk about five senses. Is there any other sense which we forget because as a part of our education, do we forget it? We always feel we feel good with somebody. We feel bad with somebody. They call good vibes, bad vibes. You go to some place, you feel good. You go to some other place, you don't feel very good must also understand that the frontal lobe is the largest part of the human brain and yet we still do not know what exactly the frontal lobe does. The shark which is one of the most ancient of animals so much so that it doesn't have a gills it doesn't have even gills to direct the water for its breathing, so it has to keep moving. But it has lines going around its body, longitudinal to its body, converging into something called an apple of Lorenzini. And it helps it in electrolocation, so much so that it can hunt, it can uh, pursue, and it can run away from threats. It can. It has 
an electro location signature for each of its prey and even for dolphins if you, if it sees the electro location sig signature for dolphins the sharks will scoot so are we able to electrolocate in spatial location? Yes, perhaps. We may be able to see things or feel things which are beyond our five senses. People call it ESP. But ESP is probably our normal sixth sense. It's, it's not actually abnormal at all. Or it's not a gift. It's just that we never looked at it. The system of education that we follow probably made us into an idiot who, who is just on, depends on these five senses, forgets about these other senses which we have. Now, one of my good friend, Dr. Garnet Sutherland. You know, he found out that the brain has a sound. It's not in the hearable range, but it has a sound. So what he did is, he, he transposed the sound into the hearable range. And you know, it was so similar to the sea. To the sea. And that's why probably sitting on the beach would get people to be calm. And he also found that when you have a tumor, the sound is different. So you could actually listen to a glioblastoma or a meningioma. Each one of these tumors have an acoustic signature. The same way, there is sound of trees. And there is sound, the universe. The universe has a sound. You Google it, you will understand the sound. The ancient Indians, they used to think, you, they used to think that the sound OM represents the sound of the universe. Now, there's a way you can visualize sounds. How do you visualize sounds? You just put some speaker on a, I mean, you just put some sand on a speaker. And then you, you make a note. And I'm going to show you this now. If you make a note, the sand aligns itself in one particular way. And this is the easiest way of seeing sound. But maybe without all the speaker, we could see sound. And I'm going to prove it to you that we can actually see sound. So I'm going to show you this experiment. So, what you saw was semantics. You know, this is Sri Yantra. It's one of the most holiest signals. It's called a Yantra. There are many Yantras. But in Indian philosophy, this Yantra is a its basis of it is a six-pointed star. 
and it's found in the holy altars. You know, the tonoscopic or the semantic visualization of Om is Sri Yantra. So there was a way people could see sound. Maybe we could, we could see too. They used to see this sound and it is not just common for us. In India, the six-pointed David star is found in another religion, Aramaic religion. So if you see, this is another mandala. This is Jewish mysticism. And I'm going to show you even animals could see this. This is a mandala. It is like Ashoka Chakra, which is a 24 spoke wheel seen on the Indian flag. And Ashoka was a Buddhist. Ashoka Chakra was a mandala, which is like a yantra. It was probably seen sound. So I'm going to show you this video. design is and they would tell you it's the Ashoka Chakra 24 spoke and the Ashoka Chakra is a mandala the Buddhist mandala or a Hindu yantra it is semantics it's just saying sound so Japanese puffer fish probably could see sound and could replicate it we probably missing some tricks here. Probably 
these mandalas are some maps you know one of the things which is really interested me one of the mantras is om namah shivaya they worship the god shiva with this but if you see shivaya the meaning of literal meaning of shiva in hindi is without or zero om uh, om actually represents infinity you know the space time fabric exists between zero and infinity we are all stuck between zero and infinity we are neither zero nor infinity when we say we are zero we are not never zero we have a mass we have some money we have something we are attached to something so we never zero so om namah shivaya actually means infinity greets or infinity worship zero and it also says shivaya namah om which means zero worships infinity you see the how poignant it this is this this mantra is so poignant that in a second it tells you where you are stuck you are stuck in a room with two doors one is infinity and one is zero you could you think it's easy to get back to zero it's not buddhism says you give away everything all your attachments well you could also work and create have knowledge and that knowledge could lead you to another door which is infinity but zero is enough you must also probably know about the higgs boson the god's particle some people call it the goddamn particle Higgs boson is one of those three which gave us mass. It gave mass to the particles after the Big Bang. Mass, if you have mass, you can never get out of space time. Because according to Einstein's theory, anything which has a mass, if you approach the speed of light, the mass increases to infinity. So you, you cannot go across probably higgs boson is what keeps us trapped in this room and there are ways probably which people knew before people call it samadhi but people knew knew it before anyways we we have gone a long way from systenostomy csf to finally to the meeting point of religions that's my farm this is where i get to think it's in nepal thank you very much